Okay, welcome to part two of topic 32, graphing exponential functions. So what we're going to start off with right now is transformations. So we're going to be dealing with the parent function of y equals 2 to the x, or f of x equals 2 to the x. And while looking at these transformations, we want to think, how do the asymptote and the intercept of the given function compare to the asymptote and the intercept of the parent function? So this is super handy because we actually already graphed this parent function in the previous video. Here's a reminder right here, what it looked like. So if we go back into this, these transformation problems, we're gonna start off again by making a table. So if we make a table, we can have our x and our y. And I'm gonna start off with those same x values that we've been dealing with. So negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So if we plug this in to our next function, we will get our answers of so everything that we have from our parent function, from up here, basically, instead of being multiplied by a positive one in the end, it's going to be multiplied by a negative one. So here, our a equals negative one. So our values from beforehand are going to be the same, except it's going to be the inverse, the negative version. So we'll have negative one-fourth, negative one-half, Uh, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 4. And when we graph that, we can see how that looks. So if we graph that here, we'll go over negative 2, down negative 1 fourth, over negative 1, down negative 1 half, over 0, down negative 1, over 1, down negative 2, over 2, down negative 4, and so on and so forth. So we can connect our points and get this exponential function. So looking here, obviously we can identify our intercept. So our y-intercept is going to be when x equals 0. So in here, our new y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 1. So instead of being here a 0, positive 1, it's reflected over the x-axis, and we have 0, negative 1. Now our asymptote here actually does not change because if we think back, it still is approaching the x-axis, or when y equals 0. So our asymptote does not change. So it's still when y equals 0. If we look at our next example, here we can point out that we have our parent function except there's this minus four after. So that's telling us that this function, there's going to be a shift, a vertical shift. It's either going to go up or down. And since here, since we see a negative four, it's probably going to shift down four units. So here, this is going to shift down four units. Now, if we remember back to when we were doing transformations earlier in the year, if we had our x value change, where in the exponent, if that was like x plus 1 or x minus 2, that's going to deal with a horizontal shift. So that's going to be either left or right. And remember with our horizontal shift, 
it looks like the opposite of what you think. So if it's going to be negative, it's actually gonna shift to the right, whereas if it's positive, we're going to shift to the left. And that's basically because we're having x minus a negative, so that's why it looks to be the opposite there. So again, we're gonna create our table with our x and y values where we have negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And here, once we plug them in for x and then subtract four from that, we get negative 3.75, we get negative 3.5. Our y-intercept is at negative three because we're shifting four units down from our original one. Our one, when we plug in one, we get negative two. And when we plug in two, we get zero right there. So right now we're gonna plot these. So we go over negative two, down 3.75, we'll be right there. Over negative one, down 3.5, right there over zero, down three. See how that's four units down for my original y-intercept of positive one. Over one unit, down two. Over two to the right and up zero. So here is my new function. And literally this is the same as our parent function, f of x equals two to the x but it's just pushed down four units. So here, if we look to our y-intercept, our y-intercept is now at zero, negative three. And our asymptote here did change. So as opposed to part A, where our asymptote did not change, here, our asymptote did change where instead of when y equals zero, our asymptote changed to when y equals negative four. Okay. So those are transformation problems. Now we're gonna look into exponential growth and decay. So here we have two models. You guys might also recognize this from Algebra 1, where we're dealing with growth models and decay models. So our first um, formula that we're going to have is a of t. Now this is just our function. It's just a fancy way of saying y equals a. Remember, this is our y-intercept times 1 plus r to the t power. Now r, this is our rate. t, this is our time, our time passed. We're used to seeing our x before. And this whole value in the parentheses is one plus r. This is our b value. Instead, we just have a sum here. So because we're growing, we have to take our rate and then add on to it every single time. So that's why instead of just being r, we have one plus r. Now, if we look to our exponential decay model, this formula is very similar, except we have a of t equals our a times one minus r, because we're decaying here, to the t power. And these values of we're still dealing with rate, we're still dealing with time, our a is still our y-intercept, our initial value. But here, because we're decaying, we have to subtract. So we're dealing with a difference. So our b value is going to be one minus our rate. So we will most likely have a decimal here. Not a negative number, but a decimal. So if we have 
kind of in summary, our growth factor is when B is greater than one. B is greater than one. That's because we're taking our rate and we're adding one to it. Whereas our decay factor is when B is somewhere sandwiched in between zero and one. So we're gonna be dealing with a decimal or a fraction here, but it's never going to be negative. So let's move on to a word problem. I know it's all your favorites. So for word problems, here, a car is purchased for $24,000. The function is y equals 24,000 times 0.8 to the x and can be used to model the value of the car x years after it was purchased. So here we have an x instead of a t, but we are going to be dealing with exponential growth and decay. We know that this value right off the bat this 24,000, this is our y-intercept because it's our initial value. So after no time has passed, our initial value of the car is $24,000. Now we can look to determine if this is going to be exponential growth or decay because if we look at our b value, 0.8. So right here, we know that B equals 0 0.8, which is less than 1. So this must be decay. Now we can also determine the rate of decay. It can be misleading because oftentimes people think that the rate of decay is actually the value you see in the B part here. But we have to remember back to our formula that actually in terms of decay factors, b equals 1 minus r. So when b equals 1 minus r, we're going to substitute in for b. We know that b is our 0 0.8 or 8 tenths here, and that equals 1 minus r. So 1 minus some rate should give us 0 0.8. We can subtract 1 from both sides and divide by negative 1 and determine that our rate is 0 0.2, or we have a decay rate of 20%. Moving on to the last two problems, we want to determine what will the value of the car be after six years and round to the nearest hundredth. So we have our formula of y equals 24,000 times 0 0.8. And we're used to seeing to the x power, but here this is going to be to the sixth because this is our time. So what we can do now is we can plug this in. So if we go to Desmos, we have 24,000 times 0.8. And then we can raise it to the sixth power. And that gives us our answer of $6,291.456. So that's going to give us our value of $6,291.456. Now, because we don't deal with thousandths when dealing with money, we deal with hundredths. If we look at this six, we always have to look one past the decimal place that we want to round to. Because this is five or more, we're going to raise the score. So our value after six years of this car will be $6,291.46. Now, sometimes problems will ask you to go backwards. So we want to determine when the value of the car will be $5,000. In other words, here we're trying to determine when our y value will equal $5,000. So if we have our equation, we're going to plug in $5,000 for y. 
So $5,000 equals 24,000 times 0 0.8 to the x power. Now what we're trying to determine here is what is x. So we haven't actually learned how to solve this yet, but I have a hint here. It says graph your function. So we're going to go on Desmos and we're going to type our first function into Desmos. So we're going to have 24,000 times 0 0.0, oops, times 0.8, and then raise that to the x power. And if we actually zoom out, we will finally see our curve because it's way up there. Okay, so there's our curve. There's our exponential function. Now we want to determine when our y value is going to equal 5,000. So in other words, we're looking for an intersection point. So we want to find when y equals $5,000. So if we do this, we're actually going to have an intersection point. This is going to give us a horizontal line. And I really like Desmos for this because it can clearly show where they actually intersect. We can click on this point, and right here, this is our intersection point, 7.03 comma 5,000. So after 7.03 years, the car will be worth $5,000. So we can go back to our notes, and we can say, so we plugged in y equals $5,000 into our calc and found the intersection point at 7.03 comma 5,000. So in terms of the context of this problem, we know in approximately seven years, if you want to be specific, 7.03 years, the value of the car will be 5,000 dollars. And that is it. That is your answer. Thank you so much for watching.